Hi, welcome. I'm here to talk to you today about this pen right here. Uh, I've had this pen for years and it's been great. It's one of my favorites, even though it's not one of the most expensive pens that you can buy. But it's proven itself to be worth it in lots of ways, in durability, uh, in the quality of writing, uh, in the fact that it doesn't leak, uh, and that it's solid brass and probably will last a lifetime. Um, I thought it was the perfect pen so I set out to buy a couple for my grandchildren, or several for my grandchildren, because they're being homeschooled right now. And homeschooling, uh, an important part of that would, I think, be journaling. So for Harper, Porter, and Tucker, I thought that uh, buying one of these would be a great thing, and buying them a nice little journal would be really nice. Uh, a way to start them on a lifetime of keeping records of their feelings and thoughts and daily occurrences. Um, uh, so I, this caused me to buy this. Uh, so I bought the latest version of this pen. I thought it would be s the same, but um, it turns out that it's not the same. Um, this pen is actually made much better. Uh, if you look at this, you can see how rough the lines are, how rough the edges are, and even sharp uh, some of the threads are. And the threads, granted, they're made uh, so that they won't break and they'll last a long time. They're, they're solid brass. Even on the inside, there's uh, no fitting that uh, would wear out. It would take quite a bit to wear out that that brass fitting inside, but it's not even a fitting. It's just drilled right into the brass. And the same here, and the same here. And then you just post the edge on here. And uh, it writes usually the first time you take it out of your pocket. You can keep it in your pocket, bang it around, and uh, nothing happens to it. It does get a little bit, uh, it gets a little bit tarnished after time, uh, but that's brass. That's what happens to it. But this pen turned out to be much, much better. It's really finely finished and polished, and uh, it's a little bit smaller. Uh, so it would fit in your pocket better and uh, it's less bulky when you write with it it's uh, it's an improvement a big improvement on the pen and even the the nib is much nicer as you can see and the feet is much nicer and the threads aren't sharp like they are over here uh, it's just a much better pen <clears throat> So I hope my grandchildren are happy with this. It's a beautiful pen that'll probably last them a lifetime. And the uh, converter inside is better than the average converter, uh, as we'll see when we look at it in more detail. Uh, I also bought them a nice little journal, each one of them, to go with the pen. Kind of looks like a Bible. And it's got a nice uh, binding. The binding is uh, is woven. So uh, when you open the pages, you don't have to worry about them flopping around too much. Uh, and the, the paper is nice quality. So uh, it's even got a nice little uh, bookmark there that allows you to pick up where you left off when you feel like jotting something down. Uh, so I hope my grandkids really enjoy these things. Um, let's talk about them. Let's look at them in greater detail. The vendor really packed these nicely. And of course, as you can see, this is a knockoff. I'm not going to comment on the ethicality of copying products. I'll 
only evaluate their quality. The Delight pens, even the tin can package, are very similar to a Caveco, which is a German brass fountain pen. They aren't identical, but are strikingly reminiscent of each other. The only thing that's not similar is the price. The Caveco usually start at about $50 and easily approaches the $100 mark. The Delike, which I believe is made by a Chinese company named Majun, which used to be called Moon Man, runs about $10 to $30 each, depending on the finish and the model. To be quite honest, I don't think that there's much difference in the quality. Of course, the ink converter is probably a bit more robust than the Delike version, although the style is, again, comparable in design. In other words, they work using the same premise. Also, you may get a precious metal nib or at least a gold plated. And granted, I'm not sure how much mere plating affects writing quality. While I'm quite aware of how real gold improves the writing quality and experience, which is much nicer and more responsive if it's gold. Whereas the Delight nibs will probably be made of iridium or steel. That's not bad though, most fountain pens. Most fountain pen nibs, even the plated versions, are made of these materials. It's still quite possible to get some very responsive, even calligraphic performance with these nibs. I'm quite certain that a solid gold nib is going to set you back nearly $100 or more. So unless you're ready to let go of some moolah for the ultimate experience, these will have to do just fine. We'll check how the pen writes a bit later. After we load the ink. So now we have the, the pen open and we've looked at what an old style ink converter looks like. It's the little sucker thingy that pulls the ink up into the pen. And we've seen the cool new syringe style converter, which in my opinion is far superior. So now it's time to fill the pen, but with what ink? Normally I use J. Herbine's Blau Provence, which means blue periwinkle. It's an excellent French ink. It's a little expensive. I also thought the little ones might get a kick out of the sparkly, shimmering diamine blue flame ink, but I don't want the kids to get their pens clogged and have to disassemble the barrel. So for the price and beauty to start, I decided on Pelican Violet. It's colorful, but reserved, and my Pelican pen is one of my favorites, so the ink isn't far behind. So that's what I'll use to fill the first pen and write a short letter to Tucker, Porter, and Harper. I hope you enjoy the letter. Hello, grandkids. These three pens are for you to jot and journal things and write like I'm writing now. Some art should be kept alive. You can write and scan it if you want. It's not incompatible with modern inventions. I also got you three nicely bound journals to keep your thoughts and memories in. I hope you enjoy these for a lifetime. They're good for the environment. No more throwaway pens. Love, Grandpa. Okay, let's do a little writing. We're not going to do anything extensive. We're just going to talk about the calligraphic qualities of the pen. I want to apply a little pressure and see if it's possible to get the necessary response to use this for some limited calligraphy. One thing is for sure about the pen, it's that it doesn't skip or dry up, which is the bane of this type of pen. You can rest assured that the ink flow is constant and consistent, by which I mean the ink flow doesn't start out too juicy and then dwindle. It doesn't clog up, 
it writes with a light touch that glides on the paper. You won't need to prime it constantly. In fact, I've kept it knocking around in my pocket sometimes for a week without using it, and despite being upside down and all around, I can usually take off the lid and it writes right away like a ballpoint pen, but with a line and a flare that you can't get from a ballpoint. And of course, it's not a ballpoint pen. It could leak if you shake it too hard or go beyond the limits of what you should do with a pen. But other than that, it's really hard to make it leak. And believe it or not, you don't have to refill it very often. With the cap on, the ink lasts quite a long time without drying up. The cap has an extremely tight fit. But getting back to the responsiveness to pressure, as I said, the pen writes lightly and smoothly, but if you want to apply a bit of pressure, you can broaden the lines, uh, the width depending on how hard you push but you won't have to gouge the paper to get those thicker lines. It's a good pen all in all. I'm really happy with it and I think the grandkids will be happy with it too, especially due to the graceful lines of the design and the soft satin finish. The pen is a little bit smaller than my original pen. It's more suitable for a smaller hand. The kids are elementary school age, so that's fine for them. One of the nice features is that you can securely screw the cap on either end, whether to close it or to post it. If you want a full length pen, then post it. However, if you think it's too heavy or too long, especially for the kids, then leave the pen unposted. The added bonus of the secure screw on lid is that even though it's unlikely to leak, it's so tight that the ink won't drip on anything. In comparison to the newer model pen, the older pen is a bit rougher hewn. It doesn't have the smooth finish, but it's still a favorite that turned me onto this newer improved version. I'm happy to hold on to the one that I have without an upgrade. It's one of my all-time bang-up favorites. I'm sold on its quality and durability and the artistic penmanship that I get while writing with it. Well, we've reached the end. This is something that I do for enjoyment. This is not sponsored and there is no remuneration. The items are my own, as are my opinions. If you like what I've done, I hope you'll like and subscribe. Until next time, take care.